So I'm out here testing out the Tamron 17 to 35 millimeter on the MC11 with the Sony a7 III. So I'm excited to show you some photos so you can see what the image quality is like uh, using it as an adapted lens. Welcome back. This time we're testing the Tamron 17 to 35 2.8 2.4. So if you remember, I mentioned I was going to review this lens. I've actually had it for a couple of months now. Uh, I was in need of a wide-angle zoom. It's not my primary lens. It's not my go-to lens. I wanted something that was affordable, uh, sharp, and worked well with my camera, obviously. So in my search... Here's my monkey again. Um, I was looking, of course, at the Sony offerings. There's the G Master 16 to 35, the the Zeiss F4. I just couldn't justify dropping that much money on a lens I'm not going to use as much. So what I did was drop a couple less, and I got the Tamron 17 to 35 2.8 to f4 uh, for Canon. And I've been using that lens with uh, MC11 on my cameras, and it's been successful. And so I want to show you some images to show you the sharpness, the wide, and the, the most zoomed in. I usually just shoot this lens either at 17 or 35, so you'll see that reflected. So here's my typical subject to test a lens when I first get it. It's my cat, Gonch. He's a lazy marabayach. <laughs> That's why his name is Conch. So as you can see, this was taken at 17 millimeters, A7 III. Uh, all these photos are snapshots. They're like street photography style, nothing professional. If I were to use this lens at a wedding or a portraiture, it would be a secondary purpose it wouldn't be my go-to it would be to be to include more of the environment than let's say a 35 would include like my 1.4 just for a uh, variation of images so anyway let's get into this this is 17 millimeters uh, the first thing you're gonna notice is this is great image quality the sharpness is amazing for a wide angle, I, I don't expect much, to be honest. It's a lens where a lot is going to be in focus. But as you can see, at 17, we're at 2.8, where it matters. So if you want a wide shot, you're going to use this at 17, at 2.8. So the 2.8 to 4 actually makes sense to me, because I'm going to use it less at 35, because I already have a 35 at 1.4. It's more about getting the 17 with 2.8 and autofocus. However, I can use it at 35, so it's a good walk around lens. Next image. Here I'm at 35, so you can see the difference between 17 and 35. You can definitely include much more of the environment at 17. Again, images are sharp. I have no complaints. Uh, I know you're, when it's adapted, you're probably wondering more about the responsiveness on a autofocus. These were taken, most of my shots that I'm going to be showing you were taken with lock-on focus. If not, they were with flexible spot. Always uh, continuous. Here's my other cat, Elote. It means corn. Don't ask me why. It doesn't make sense. 17 millimeters. You've got pretty good... Uh, Bokeh, you know, the, the blur out effect is nice, even though it's wide, because the focus is on his face, right here. Yet, this is so close to him, it's already blurred out a little bit. Alright, so this was at La Jolla, this is Bird Rock Coffee. And at Bird Rock Coffee, they tend to have artists... And I didn't know this. This was actually my first time at this coffee shop. And they were playing music. So I thought it would be fun to use the 17 millimeter to capture the whole room, literally. 
I wasn't standing too far away from him where it was too or too close I mean I wasn't too close to be creepy so 17 millimeters as you can see is a great storytelling length when you combine that with your other lenses you're gonna get a well-rounded uh, presentation of work so if I were doing a photo shoot for this guy let's just say this would be a, a first shot gives you context another shot would be with a different lens where you get a more of a traditional portrait of just isolating the subject but at 17 this gets the job done of telling the story of where this person's at again this is at 17 millimeters this is a workshop for cars and I enjoy this workshop because this is where they bring BMWs that are classic up to speed with technology or new parts you know just getting them back to working condition even though they're older so this was also 2.8 and as you can see it does a great job of getting everything in focus because my focus point was around here everything's probably gonna be in focus because it's a wide angle lens but it's great for establishing context which I like a lot after going to Bird Rock Cafe I went to Wayfair Bread which is a very popular uh, bread shop <laughs> I don't know how to explain it they have sandwiches they have bread loaves pastries uh, they opened in San Diego not too long ago and they got a lot of reviews and, and applauds because uh, they even came out in the New York uh, t Times, I believe. And they, they just have high quality bread, rustic. Um, these are breads that you're not going to feel bad eating. At 17 millimeters, you can see we have excellent sharpness. Tells a story. All right. This is at 35. So it gives you a, a decent isolation. Here we have more of an action shot. She's picking out the bread, someone's order. Oh, they had cookies too, I see. Okay, I took these shots at 17 and this was close to minimum focus distance. When you do minimum focus distance, you can see that the blur effect or bokeh is very strong effect. It has very good isolation right here. My focus point was literally just this tip of the bread. Everything else is blurred out. Same here. Focus point right here. The detail on this lens is excellent, as you can see here. All right, this one I did a bit more work because I want to share this on my social media. This was a pastry that I was really impressed with. It's a blood orange pastry. With some type of uh, marmalade and honey there's the honey you can see the texture so the color I enhanced it of course because it's like more of a food vibe but I just loved being able to take a shot like this this was actually at 27 millimeter I wanted a little bit tighter I didn't want too much distortion as you can see the co the comparison here less less work was done on this one it's just I should have not included this one, but this is at 17. Still very sharp. All right, this is outdoors right across from that bread shop. You have access to the wind and sea if you drive a couple minutes further north. And I wanted to use this for more context shots, more storytelling with a wide angle lens. Sharpness and details are excellent, as you can see. And with a focus distance right here, it's adequately blurred out in the background. All right, I really like this shot. This is the type of shot this lens was made for, to capture an entire scene. Leading lines, I just love the scene here. I would use this as a wallpaper. <laughs> There's a lizard right there. This was shot at F5, I believe. Yes, F5. Got some seals. This was at 35 millimeters. Excellent sharpness. Because this lens comes in at, a, I believe, 599. 
I'll put links below. It's not expensive for what it offers at 2.8 to 4. At 17 where it matters, you're going to get something that you're going to be very happy with that you could use professionally regardless of it being adapted. And I know that the Tamron just released the same company. They just released information about a 17 to 28 native. If you don't have a wide angle, uh, obviously I would recommend you to go for that one. But in my case, or in the case of other people that are using Canon or other Canon lenses, if you don't already have this lens, I would still recommend it if you're mixing between Canon and Sony because you're going to be able to use your lens with both systems. And quite effectively, just you can't use it for video, obviously, but let's say you're using a Canon 5D or an EOS R, this lens is going to work great for you. And then if you want to use your Sony, this lens will work great for you. So it's this is more of a lens that's more budget friendly and you don't necessarily need to spend extra money for the native lens and you're using a Canon system. You see all these shots. Uh, this is a bit farther so it's not going to be as sharp but it's still decently sharp. I liked it better in black and white. Here I was just tracking this bird just to see if it would and it actually did so I was happy with it. It's actually small for the whole frame. This one just for texture and colors. You can see it's still sharp. This is my favorite shot. I actually worked more on this image. The original is right here. Like I mentioned before, this tells a story. This fits a whole environment. That's what I love about this wide angle. So some of you might even look into Rokinon for a wide angle. I was actually considering the 14 millimeter 2.8, but I've had the manual version and I thought it was a bit too wide for me. 17 was a sweet spot. So since 17 was 17 or 16 was what I was aiming for, this lens made sense to me and it's more than wide enough for me. That's the black and white. But I like this one a lot after working with it. I gave it a sort of a tilt shift effect using the Nick collection. All right, those are all the image I have. Uh, if you are still waiting for that Tamron that's native to the Sony, obviously get that one. Uh, it's a good deal. I'm sure the price will be very competitive. However, if you already have this lens, or you've been thinking about it, getting it used, or getting it as a lens that you can use on both Canon and Sony, I highly recommend this lens for its uh, capabilities, its autofocus system. Uh, I had no issues. I never missed a shot. Autofocus works great. It's a wide angle. It's not as hard as a telephoto zoom. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, my next videos coming up are going to be about wedding photography. I've been promising the one where I did a wedding with two lenses, so I will be releasing that this week. Just don't know which day. I will have to work on that. And then we'll work on that later. There's more lenses to come. Uh, like I said, I like to adapt lenses. I have fun being able to use my lenses on both systems and double dip. But this is definitely a lens I keep in my bag when I'm at a wedding in case I need a wide shot that I cannot get with another lens. Thank you for watching.